Father, we give you praise. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this fellowship, bringing us together one more time to praise your name. You're showing up worthy, being better to us than we've been to ourselves. As we speak, I pray that you will do what preaching cannot do. By the power of your spirit, intersecting with your word, meet us where we are, bring us where we need to be. In Jesus' name we pray, all God's people said, amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. Praise is what we do. Amen. Praise is what we do. I do understand that we got some other stuff on the program. Uh, I'm just not looking at the program right now. I'm just going to... I'm just going to jump in and get in where I fit in. Amen. And since we've been singing about praise and, and then uh, Minister Robinson, Bobby was just like, thank you. I said, well, let me get mine in then. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 to 20. Y'all okay? Amen. If you haven't, say, I got it. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody or making music to the Lord with your heart giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ praise is what we do Look at somebody and say, praise is what we do. We have a praise that encourages the saints. We have a praise that edifies the Savior or exalts the Savior. And then we have a praise that encompasses every situation. Let me say that again. As we look at the text, I see that we have a praise that encourages the saints, one another, he's going to talk about. And then we also have a praise that exalts the Savior. It's to the Lord in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. And then we have a praise that encompasses every situation. First of all, before we go there, I want you to make a connection because 19 is intricately and inextricably connected to verse 18. Do you have your Bibles? See it. And it says, and do not get drunk with wine. And he says, for that is debauchery. But here it is, be filled. And we talked about this for a week ago. Be filled with the Spirit. Remember, we asked the question, what is it that you're full of? Because what, I said, do you remember we asked what? Uh-huh, because what you're full of, that's what's going to come out of you. Right? All right. So he says, be filled with the Spirit. Allow the Spirit of God to do his work in you to the point that he is forming you and making you into the person, into uh, Jesus Christ, and, and you'll be lacking him. Walking, talking, visible manifestations of the glory of God. That's what the Holy Spirit has come to do. That's his new assignment. Not only to come into you and guarantee your future, but also to prepare you for that future by making you like Jesus. Matter of fact, let me put it like this. That, uh, he's working on two ends in terms of preparation. God is working on two ends. On one end, he's working in heaven. and the other end, he's working on you. Jesus is going to say, I go to prepare a place for you. But what he says that, he said, but not only am I going to go and prepare a place for you, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit in you and prepare you for the place. Oh, not somebody say I'm already preaching. Did you hear what I said? He's preparing the place for you, but the Holy Spirit is inside of you right now preparing you for the place. By the way, have you ever seen some folk uh, that they, the place was ready for them? The neighborhood was ready for them, but they wasn't ready for the neighborhood. So when they moved in, got five and six cars out there leaking oil. Ray Ray and Nay Nay out in the middle of the street hollering and cussing each other out at 12 o'clock in the morning. We got to call 911. Wasn't nothing wrong with the place. The place was prepared for them, but they weren't prepared for the place. So Jesus said, it ain't enough for me to prepare a place, but I got to prepare you for the place. So I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit to get inside of you and not only reside, but he's going to be doing to do a work in you so that what's inside of you can come out. 
Now, if the spirit is inside of you doing the work, what's the result? What is going to look like? Verse 19 and following begins to say, when the community who's filled with the spirit of God got you inside of you, he said, this is what it's going to look like. First of all, it's going to look like praise. And notice the text, verse 19, he says, addressing, another way to put it is, speaking to one another. And what? Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Y'all see that? Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Notice he says one another. That's why I get this idea about we have a praise that encourages the saints. One of the things that praise is going to do, he says, I don't, I don't just want you singing to God. Now, you do sing to God, but I want there's a horizontal aspect to this thing. And I want you speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I want you reminding one another of who God is is what he's giving you and where he's taking you because you're living in a world where you are under attack matter of fact all through this book pretty much every chapter you dealing with there is the reality of a satanic demonic reality that is now satan no he can't de-save you once jesus saved you he played for keeps but what he can do is lie to you and get you on the bleachers so you won't get nobody else. And you'll begin to wonder whether God is good and whether God got your back. And if you are persuaded that God is not good, guess what you're going to do? You're going to start looking for another way to satisfy yourself outside of God. That's why you need praise because praise reminds one another that God is good, that God is working, and you don't need no nobody but him so he says I need some I need you to do it to one another some of you so sometimes I'm gonna need to hear you praise and remind me and sometimes you're gonna be low and I'm gonna hear and I'm gonna have to give it to you I wish I had somebody because he said one he says one another now let me tell you what happens when it comes to music M music is a beautiful thing because music ministers to the memory huh if you want to get something in you, put it to music. Okay, like you do remember even with your children. And you taught them the ABCs. You didn't just say, okay, A, and then after A, we have B. And then after C, we have B, we have Mr. C. And then nobody, ain't nobody listen to all that. What did you do? Whether you could hold a note or not, you went, on, you went for it, didn't you? A, B, C, D. That's how you learned it. Because music ministers to the memory. If you want to get something down in somebody, you let them sing. I wish I had a witness here. The music has a way of doing that. It'll bring some stuff back. Have you ever? Have you ever been just riding down the freeway and a song came on and not only did you remember the music, but you remember the time that you heard it and where you was and who you were? Loving you. We're going to have to dismiss church early today. All I'm trying to tell you is that music ministers to the memory like so, but even more so. He says, I need you to remind yourself of who I am and what I've done. So the pattern of scripture from Old Testament to New Testament is that God does a work in your life. And after that, we sing about it. All right. There's a story that he creates. And then we sing the story. There, let me put it like this. There is a story behind my song. Oh, you need a Bible for it? I'm thinking like in Exodus. He said, let my people go. Sent the plagues. Brought the Passover. Brought them out of Egypt. They out in the wilderness. Then they get to the Red Sea. Uh, God opens up a highway them go across the enemies try to do the same thing he drowns them in the red sea and after he delivers them they don't just go as to business as usual but they stop and they sing a song i will sing to the lord for he triumphed gloriously the horse and the rider he's thrown in the sea and they didn't just seem to be singing they didn't sing because it was on program they sang because I just saw him work and I want to keep it in my memory because there is a story behind my song I wish I had somebody that can say the reason why I sing on Sunday whenever I sing is because that's a story behind God has been doing some work 
I wish I had a witness. So he said, y'all need to sing to one another. Y'all need to speak to one another in the Psalms and in the hymns and in the spirit. So not only is uh, the music minister to the memory and then, but it's also multifaceted. Psalms and then some hymns. And then he opened it up, spiritual songs. So, so nobody got a jet. You know, you ain't got no monopoly on this thing where we just got to do the songs you like. It's enough for everybody. Those who are old school, you need to listen to some new school stuff. Those of you who new school, you need to listen to some old school stuff. Let me tell you what I'm saying. There's some of you in the old school, you like your hymns and all that. Keep what you got. But you need to hear some new stuff, and you need to hear some of these new brothers and sisters who are singing to remind you that the same God that worked in slavery and the same God that worked in civil rights and the same God that worked in reconstruction and the same God who worked through all of your trials and tribulations is the same God who's working now. And then some of these new school cats, every now and then you need to put on a hymn. Every now and then you need to go back and remind yourself that God didn't just start working in the 21st century, but God was working before you got here. New school need to listen to old school. Old school need to listen to new school because it's praise, it's hymns, it's spiritual songs. It's enough for everybody. But the common denominator is that there is a story behind the song. No wonder she said, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Uh-huh, I knew you had it. Not only does it minister to the memory and not only is it multifaceted, but praise also has a way of getting the message to marinate. My daddy, on July 4th, we celebrate, you know, Independence Day, but I like to see him, I watch my daddy on July the 3rd. And on July the 3rd, daddy didn't start the barbecue on July the 4th, daddy started preparation. On July 3rd, and I remember that greenish blue bucket D used to have, that bowl. And he put that meat in there and he would uh let it sit. He put some seasoning in there. I wish I had somebody. And then he let it sit overnight. And in the morning, yesterday, the next day when we ate the barbecue, not only was it salty, not only was it seasoned at the top, but it was good all the way down to the bone. Can I tell you why? Because daddy let it marinate. And see, some folk are just surface Christians. You just got a little salt on your own Sunday. A little hallelujah, a little praise the Lord. But if you start singing it, it'll marinate and get in your bone. And you'll do a, you'll be driving down 15 and give a spontaneous praise. Because it's not just, it's just not what I do on Sunday, but it's what we do is who I am. Am I making sense? Where's Jonathan at? Then the text is going to say, continue, the word he uses for speaking to one another and giving thanks. All of those are a string of participles. I ain't trying to give you no grammar lesson. I'm just trying to tell you that the participles that he uses are in present tense. And in Greek, present tense means continuous action. Meaning I don't just want you to do it one time, but I need you to keep on doing it. Say, why you need to keep on doing it? Because God keep on making a way. And if he keep on making a way, I need to keep on giving some praise. And what you need to do is some of y'all need to update your praise. My wife always getting on me about my computer telling me that I need to do these, uh, these updates. She said, because if I don't do updates, what I'm doing is I'm putting my computer at risk. So she said, you got to do these updates to keep up with it. And like so, but even more so, when it comes to your praise, some of y'all need to do some updates. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about? Some of y'all praising him by what he did 20 years ago and 30 years ago, and that's good. But here's my question. Let me do a Janet Jackson on you. What has it done for you lately? And if I pull the house... I sure believe that he probably done something for you last week. And forget that. Just this morning, he woke you up and touched you with the finger of love. If I just go, somebody needs some updates to remind you that God is good because the enemy is in your ear trying to talk you out of the goodness. 
goodness of God so that you will seek another way. But you need to turn to the enemy and say, thank you, but no thank you. But God is good to me. And I don't need nobody but him. You know that song y'all be singing, my praise, praise is a weapon? It's, it, for re- it really is. We have a praise that encourages one another. Y'all ought to just sing every now and then. We speak to one another. And you can't outsource your praise to the praise team or to the choir. No, you got to pray. And can't nobody do it just like you because ain't nobody been through it just like you have. So can't nobody really praise just for you. The text says one another. And you saying, well, Rev, I ain't the kind of person. No, you are the kind of person. Have you been saved? You the kind of person. Have you been redeemed? Did you get some mercy and grace? You the kind of person. Well, I just ain't the kind that sing and all that. I ain't, I don't know no notes. I, 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 ain't, I ain't good. I got tom tone deaf. Don't, don't worry about all that. Don't worry about being tone deaf. We, we just singing in one key. Can I tell you what the key is? We sing in the key of grace. And if you've been touched by the grace of God, that's all you need. Open your mouth and give him praise. We have a, we have a praise that encourages the saints. You ever, by the way, before I leave that, you, you ever, and that's why you need to come on to church. And you don't need to come on to church, just be coming to church. You need to come to this community of faith because sometimes you don't need to just be by yourself. You, you need, God brought you into a community. And sometimes, you ever come up in here, you low, and I mean, life just kicked you in the gut and just kicked the wind out of you. H- have you ever been there? And Jack get up talking about, come on, praise the Lord. And you be like, man, you know what? I just ain't feeling it right now. You know, have you ever had that? Uh, 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 are you going to be honest enough to say that I'm saved, but sometimes life kick me in the gut? And sometimes I come to church and I, ain't, I just ain't got it. But have you ever been in that point where you came one Sunday and then you was all out? You ain't have nothing. The fuel was low. But you heard that mother over there, or you heard that brother over there, or you heard that deacon over there, or you heard that music over there, and all of a sudden, God began to pour into you, and God began to renew you, and next thing you know, the tears are coming down, and your hands are going up, and you stand up and say, I can go on a little while longer, because you need me, and I need you to text say one another. Thank God for the fellowship. Huh? We, we have a praise not only that encourages the saints. Stick with the text if you please. But we have a, we have a, we have a praise that exalts the Savior. Text says, all right. Verse 20. Well, well, sing, verse, verse 19, ease into it. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody or making music, right? To the who? To the Lord with your heart. Y'all see that? Giving thanks always for everything to God, the Father, in the name of the Lord, Lord Jesus. He's saying, look, and, and here's the thing about music. Uh, often you sing about what you love. You don't just sing about everything. Singing is something you don't just, you know, sing, sing and get to your heart. And pretty much you sing about what you value and you sing about what you love. And back then they would actually have parties uh, in Ephesus. Ephesus was known not only as a commercial town and not only as a religious center, but it was also a party town. If you wanted to have a party, excuse me, but... Uh, Ephesus was the Las Vegas of first century. If you want to show enough, have a good time. Go down there to, to Ephesus. And one of the things, well, y'all get so quiet. And uh, what, one of the things that they would do back then in Ephesus is they would have, okay, hold your seatbelt. You ready? They, they had drinking parties and they had sex parties. And usually they had them together. They had the drinking and the sex all together. Now just shake your head and say, Ain't that, this just don't make no sense. Don't, just, don't they just vex you? Someone said, no. <laughs> What's wrong with you? 
By the, by the way, they even had a Greek god, Bacchus, who was the god of wine. So when they would drink, they would be filled with their God. And can I tell you what they would do when they got filled with the God at the party? Can I tell you what they do? They start singing and they start dancing and they start shouting and celebrating something that doesn't live, that can't do nothing for them, can't hear them, can't speak. Oh, but they celebrating. And what this text is saying, beginning in verse 18, he's saying, look, I need you to cut out the drinking parties and I need you to cut out the sex parties and I need you to go stop going to them kind of parties and all that. But instead of be filled with the wine and be filled with the Jack Daniels, I need you to be filled with the spirit. Now, I don't need you to stop partying now. I, I, I didn't save you to stop partying, but now I'm going to give you a purpose for partying. I'm going to give you a reason to celebrate. I'm gonna, I wish I had somebody. Yeah, you ain't got to stop. And some of y'all kill me. You got saved and act like you don't know how to celebrate no more with your dignified bougie behind. I'm, you know what? Y'all kill me with this mess. Now, I can look at you and tell that you know how to. Nah, but you got all up in here with a suit and a dress and a hat. Sit all down, cross your legs. It don't take all that. He didn't save you to be bougie. He didn't save you merely to be dignified. You don't lose your party, but now you lift your hands and you do your dance, but you're doing it because he changed your life. I got a reason. Oh, I got a reason because it's to the Lord. Anybody know the Lord in here? Yeah, it's the Lord that brought me out. He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, this text comes full circle to chapter 1. Remember chapter 1 where he talks about praising God? He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And now we come full circle here. And he said, now let me tell you how to bless the Lord. I need y'all to speak to one another and I need you to sing and give thanks to this Lord. And here's the thing. Some of y'all, you can't praise God because you wait on a breakthrough and you wait on the blessing. But the text said you already been blessed. You already got a breakthrough. You already got more than what you deserve. You got a Enough right now to praise him for all of eternity because he brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. He brought you from curse to bless. He brought you from abandoned to adopted. He brought you from enslaved to redeemed. He brought you from guilty to forgiven. He brought you from condemned to confirm. If he never do anything else, you got enough to lift your hands and open up your mouth and let it all out. Give him some praise. Talking about you waiting on a breakthrough. Yeah, you don't need, you don't need that. And see, when, when you start getting ungrateful and you start getting common with God and you start coming to church and you forget how y'all got hooked up, you forget how he saved you. I wish I had a witness in here. You'll start thinking that God owe you. You want folk to acknowledge you because you showed up in church. I'm sorry, I just ain't that kind of pastor. I got to stand you up and we celebrate because you came to church. No, God don't owe you. You owe him. Look at somebody say, don't get it twisted. You done forgot how y'all got hooked up. And see, that's how we turn the church into a bunch of glorified prima donna celebrities. Because you think somebody owe you something. I wish I had somebody here. I told them at the early, early, early service that 
some of these uh, recording artists that we got, we got to be careful. Now, you want to celebrate your recording artist, somebody who's given their life, and they got the talent and the gift, and they're giving all, you want to honor that. You understand what I'm saying? But sometimes they go beyond the thing, and they just so arrogant, they sit up, talk down to folk, talk crazy to people, got all these old crazy demands and all that. Now, I don't just want no M&Ms in my hotel. I want all green. You know what? You can keep your... Oh, I'm trying to learn how to talk to church people. But you can stay right where you are. Because <laughs> this ain't about making no select. But the sad thing about it, y'all, they couldn't pull that mess off if we didn't endorse it. And we treat them like they're a celebrity. No, the world has celebrities, but we only have one we celebrate, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. We serve, we have an audience of one. The only one who got the right to sit down and look around and evaluate whether he like it or not is the one who died and rose again. Everybody else is a worshiper. And see, we'll fall into these little low uh, dysfunctional types of praise when we start thinking it's about us. Somebody say dysfunctional praise. Can I, can I give you some before y'all get mad at me? Mm. See, see, when we make it, it ain't about God, it ain't about to the Lord no more, and it's about man, then it becomes dysfunctional praise. And I ain't doing what I'm doing because of my connection with him in my heart. It's because of the person that's on the stage. You see what I'm saying? So we got this dysfunctional praise. Well, well, one of them is, I call it Simon Says Praise. And the only reason you're doing what you're doing is because the person on the stage tell you to do that. Lift your hand. Turn right. Turn left. Bend down. Spit on your neighbor. Run to McDonald's. Give me a number two. Come back. Like It's too many rules, first of all. Shoot, I had to go through this much at a rap concert. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not a connection between me and God. And it's nothing wrong with folk giving destruction. But if that's the only thing that you responded to, you forgot this text said not to man, but it's to the Lord. Can, can I give you another one so you can roll your eyes at me again? Another dysfunctional praise is what I call uh, hokey pokey praise. Left foot in, right foot out, do the hokey pokey. That's what it's all about. Now the hokey pokey praise is, hokey pokey is, is a ritual. Every time you do it, it's the same thing over and over again. And some folk, you just got a hokey pokey praise. It ain't about your connection or your relationship. It's just a ritual. I'm coming to church. Here's the program. Here's the thing. Let's get through it. Looking at your watch, talking about let's get it over with. See, when you lose, the, see, here's the problem with this mess. Looking at your watch, talking about when it's going to be over with. That's ritual. That ain't no relationship. Can I just bring it home for you? How, how, many, how many married folks in here? How many married folks? Oh, praise the Lord for the married people. How would you feel and you reach out to your spouse to kiss your spouse? And your spouse start looking at their watch, talking about, come on, let's get it over with. You know what? You know what? You can keep all that. I ain't never seen no real relationship where the success of the relationship is how quick we got it over with. We need to get this thing fixed, y'all. Okay. And you got musical chairs praise. Remember the game music chair? And when the music play, what? You get up with the music. And some folk, it ain't because of to the Lord. It's just because of the music. They can't feel nothing. They can't say nothing. They can't respond to nothing unless the organ is playing, the keyboard playing, somebody, the praise team singing. And as long as the music is going, you can shout, you can sing. And as soon as the music is over, your praise is only as long as the music 
here, I'm just trying to tell you, if you don't have one keyboard, if you don't have one organ, if you don't have one drum, you ought not do it because of the music. You ought to do it because Christ gave you a song, and that song is I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, and I can sing that whether I got music or not. Ooh. Then you got, let me do one more. Then you got this one. You got what I call prosperity praise. Folk can't praise the Lord unless somebody get up and say, it will, you know what, if your next praise, God going to give you a new house. God going to give you a car. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I see it. God going to give you a boo. If you just lift your hand, when you go home, your boo will be there. And see... You ain't, you ain't said nothing the whole service, but as soon as they say God going to give you, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's your greedy self. God got to bribe you into praising him. Let me tell you something. He's already done enough. You don't need all that to praise him. You don't need no music. Thank God for the music, but you don't need no music. You don't need a praise team. You don't need nobody holding out no carrot for you. Let me tell you all you need. Can I tell you all you need? All you need is a memory to be able to think back about how good he's been. Oh, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my, I moved from thinking to thinking. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. I don't need all of that. All I need is a remembering, a member, a memory to look back at what is already done. Can I do one more and sit down? We have a praise that encourages the saints. Look like I'm going to have to do it without music today. We have a praise. <laughs> that exalts the Savior. And finally we have a praise. That encompasses. Every situation. Will you go back with me to this tip? No, 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 no. It says, verse 20, you in verse 20? It says, giving thanks always and for everything to God, the Father, in the name. Did you see that? Giving thanks for uh, all things? All, always and for all things. The text is going to say that there is never a time where praise is not appropriate. There is never a situation in your life where you cannot Open up your mouth and give God praise. The text says, give thanks for all things. We often think about it. We, we, we've seen, seen this song, and it's a cool song. I'm just saying it's just not enough. It says, I sing because I'm, I'm happy. But that'll only, that'll only give me to sing for only so many times because I'm not always happy. Now, I got joy, but I... My name is Sean Taylor. I'm a Christian and I ain't always happy. Anybody want to join me and tell the truth? I'm not always happy. And if I'm waiting on be, be happy, my, it ain't going to be no always and all things praise because I can't be happy in all things. But I can, oh, because this text said because of what Christ has done, not only can I sing when I'm happy, I also can sing when I'm hurting. Did you see it in the text when it said, in all things, in everything? Now, it doesn't mean you crazy. It doesn't mean that you shouting about the pain. The Bible's not telling you to be happy about pain. He's not being able to tell you, oh, oh, thank God for my cancer. I'm just so happy that I got cancer. You ain't got to act. Sin is sin. Evil is evil. Hurt is hurting. And you ain't got to celebrate the pain. We're not celebrating the pain. Anybody that like pain, that, that ain't faith. That's freaky. You know, beat me, baby. No, that ain't what he's saying. That's something else. <laughs> I 
<laughs> He's saying in everything for all things, not because I celebrate the pain. The reason why I can celebrate in all things is because God is working in all things. Now, I may not see how he's doing it. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I've seen his track record and I know that he's able in the midst of my situation to work in me and get out of me what he put in me and accomplish his purpose for me. Let me tell you, there is nothing that you will go through as a child of God that will not work for God's glory and for your good. Let me say that one more time. As a child of God, there is nothing that you will go through that God will not use it for his glory and for your good. And he will take every situation in your life and use it to make you just like him. So I can praise him in all things because he is working in all things. There's not a situation where you won't, you won't have a praise. It was Horatio Spafford who uh, gone through a lot. He had reached, it was a roller coaster in his life. He had reached tip top up there in Chicago. He had uh, got a lot of money and got a lot of success in real estate. And then he lost it all in the Chicago fire. Not only did he lose everything he had in the Chicago fire, but he also Lost his four-year-old son. His son got sick with a fever. His four-year-old son died. He decided, and he's a Christian man, he decided as a business move, he said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to leave Chicago and I'm going to move to Europe. So he sent his family on ahead of him. They crossed the Atlantic and tragedy happened again. The, the, the ship sank and his daughters died. The only one that was alive remained was his wife. And she wrote to him, our daughters have died. I'm the only one that has been spared. And as he's going to meet his wife, he's now crossing the Atlantic. Somebody pointed to him at the place where it went down and his daughters uh, died. And as a Christian, what he did was this. He took pen to paper and he said, when peace like a river attended my way. That's good times. Then he kept on writing. He said, when sorrows like sea billows roll, that's bad times. He said, whatever my lot, that's all times. Thou has taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It may not be well with my health, but it's well with my soul. It may not be well right now with my finances, but it's well with my soul. It may not be well with my marriage, but it's well with my soul. Because I got a God who is working in all things to get glory for his glory and for my good. I may not see it. I may not understand it. But I got a God who reaches down and holds me in the hollow of his hand. I wish I had somebody here. Some of y'all think you're exempt from praise. Let me go on and give you an exemption card. If you, feel, if you fit this description, you're uh, exempt from praise. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? If you fit this description, you ain't got to praise them no more. If the pressure that you're going through right now is the final chapter of your life, don't praise. If the pressure that you're going through right now confines you and defines you and that's all there is to your life don't praise I got one more thing here if what you going through means that God is against you you ain't got no reason to praise but the reason why you not exempt is because everything that I just named does not apply to you can I tell you why uh, whatever you're going through, this is not the final chapter of your life. 
because before I read chapter 5, I read chapter 1 where he says that he has sealed you with the Holy Spirit as a guarantee that what he started in you, he's going to complete in you. I wish I had somebody to let you know that the best is yet to come and there is hope beyond your present situation. Number two, I know that this don't apply to you, that what you going through totally defines you and confines you. Can I tell you why? Because before I read chapter five, I read chapter one, and in chapter one it said that I've been redeemed by Jesus Christ and I'm now defined by him and because he set me free there is no situation that defines me and confines me because whatever I go through if anybody asks you I'll tell you that I'm a child of God and let me tell you one more thing the third thing don't apply to you that what you going through means that God is against you God ain't against you because I read chapter, before I read chapter 5, I read chapter 1. And chapter 1 said, now you did some stuff that made God turn against you. But can I tell you what he did with all your sin? I said, can I tell you what he did with your skeletons that's in the class? Some of y'all ain't got skeletons, you got live bodies in the class. Can I tell you what he did with it? He went into the closet, got your skeletons, got all your sin, dragged it out the closet, put it on a hill called Calvary, shed his blood, and said, if you believe on me, we ain't got to talk about this no more. God is for you. Matter of fact, Romans said, if God be for you, who can be against you? Is there any? here that's convinced that in the midst of everything that I go through, I can still lift my hands. I can open up my mouth and I can give God praise in all things because he's working in everything. The choir used to sing the song that said, for every mountain, you brought me over. For every trial, you sing me through. For every blessing, hallelujah. He said, for this, I give you praise. Is there anybody here that got a for this praise? I said, is there anybody here that got a for this praise? For this, came down through 42 generations. For this, heal the sick. For this, raise the dead. For this, unstop deaf ear. For this, open blinded eye. For this, got on a hill, died for my sin. For this, buried in the grave. For this, got up Sunday morning. For this, put food on my tape. For this, put clothes on my mind for this gave me a regulated mind for this save my soul is there anybody here is there anybody here that got a for this praise lift your hand open up your mouth and give God praise look at somebody and said neighbor after all been through I still got joy look at somebody else and said neighbor after all that I've been through 